Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is American Business Systems, and this is our weekly webinar. Uh, we're here every Wednesday at this time and invite you to join us anytime your schedule permits. Uh, we also record each of our webinars and encourage you to visit our library of recorded webinars on our blog. Uh, the topics of our weekly webinars vary from week to week, and we work to ensure the content is always beneficial to you and worthy of your time. Today's webinar is entitled, Why Would You Choose, Why Would a Doctor Choose You Over Any Other Medical Billing Company? And before we get started, I want to call your attention to the, to the control panel that popped up as part of this meeting. Uh, please note that, that you have a, a little hand there that you can click on to um, you know, let me know that you're, that, I can, that you're hearing me first off. But uh, um, in fact, if you would do that, I do see some, um, some hands popping up there. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Shauna, Tim. We see you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, also, you'll notice there on the control panel that uh, you can type in questions that you would like to have answered during today's webinar, uh, and we'll answer all of them that uh, the time permits us to answer. Uh, my name is Dirk Davis. Uh, I'm one of the business coaches here at American Business Systems. And um, there we go. Uh, we do appreciate your interest in our opportunity, and uh, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, who is American Business Systems? Uh, American Business Systems is the nation's largest network of independent medical billers. Uh, we've been training and supporting uh, our licensees for 20 years and uh, have been involved with uh, the medical billing industry for uh, just almost 30, three decades, almost 30 years. Uh, we provide individuals and families with the ability to start their own business in one of the most recession-proof industries in existence, uh, and they're able to do so without attending a single college course. Uh, it's important to note also that the majority of our licensees had no previous experience or knowledge of medical billing uh, other than just having been a patient in their doctor's office. So uh, we're very accustomed to uh, working with folks that, uh, that you know, don't have the experience that they feel may be necessary. Uh, all of our services are web-based, uh, don't require any physical software to be downloaded onto a computer. Uh, our systems are extremely user-friendly and very intuitive. Uh, operating in the cloud provides you with complete flexibility as to how you manage and grow your business. Uh, you can access and operate your business from anywhere on this planet that you can, um, that you can reach an internet connection. Uh, you can have employees anywhere on the continent. You can have a sales rep in every time zone. Uh, you can work with any doctor that is part of the United States healthcare system. Uh, additionally, our web-based services provide physicians with more oversight and management opportunities of their business than they've ever had before. Uh, from detailed reporting to real-time reimbursement status, uh, every financial aspect of their business is at their fingertips. Uh, now, we'll likely spend the majority of this webinar uh, discussing medical billing, uh, but please know that our licensees have nine different services uh, that their licensees uh, provide th that our licensees provide to their clients. Uh, any of our business coaches can talk to you more about these. Uh, you can also learn more about them uh, by visiting us at absystems.com. Uh, and one of the ways you can learn even more is by clicking on either of the orange buttons you see there, uh, and that will grant you access to our virtual brochure uh, that, again, will we'll go a little more in-depth to, uh, to the services we offer and um, uh, all of the different uh, um, detailed aspects of our uh, opportunity here. Uh, by the way, we do have the highest rating possible with the Fort Worth Better Business Bureau, uh, so feel free to uh, check us out there if you would like to. Uh, we are located in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, just north of Fort Worth. Um, certainly welcome to stop by and visit us if you are ever in the area. Uh, of course, uh, social media, uh, we are there as well. We invite you to uh, follow us at AB Systems. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to check out um, all sorts of information, including uh, recordings of these live webinars. Uh, you can find uh, all sorts of that information at uh, absystems.com slash blog. Now, one of the very first things that we do for our licensees, uh, our new licensees, is to invite them to attend our live training workshop. Uh, we host a class every five to six weeks, uh, and the next one is going to be the week of December 9th. Uh, for those of you on here that are planning to attend that class, please get your paperwork to us as soon as you can, uh, th as this class two will be completely full. Uh, you know, we limit these classes to no more than 20 people, uh, so again, please be sure that uh, we have your chair reserved if you are planning to attend. Uh, this is the very last workshop that we'll be having this year, and uh, uh, again, it promises to, to fill up very quickly. Now, as you may already be aware, uh, our CEO, Patrick Phillips, 
uh, is a renowned author and expert on all things medical billing. Uh, here are a couple of his recent books that should be on your Christmas list. Uh, they're both uh, great reads and very insightful for those interested in uh, learning more about our industry. Uh, you can find both of them on Amazon.com and uh, in any major bookseller. Uh, Patrick is also on the uh, editorial board of Billing and Coding Advantage and is frequently published for areas of his expertise. Uh, I'm proud today to welcome Patrick to the call. Uh, Patrick, are you there? I sure am, Eric. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction. I like that. Renowned author. I didn't realize Renowned. that was that. Yeah, till, till you said that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. To some of us, at least. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, this is going to be uh, pretty exciting. I am going to focus a little bit today on uh, why a doctor would choose you over any other medical billing company. And people are always asking us that, aren't they? Uh, what, why, why would a doctor choose me to do their billing when they obviously could do it themselves with their own staff and their own software? Uh, but the real question is, you know, what about all the other billing companies that are out there that are trying to get the doctor's business? What, what, what will cause you to stand out, you know, in the marketplace? And so I thought we'd focus on that a little bit today. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I wanted to start with this uh, question uh, that people really ought to be thinking about right now. And that is, how will the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, uh, affect the medical billing business, uh, businesses that are out there, including our licensees? Uh, this is a big deal right now, isn't it? I mean, um, I wouldn't quote uh, Vice President Biden on that, but it is a big deal. <laughs> it uh, is a big, big deal. deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, here's one of the articles that we ran across just recently. This is all very recent stuff, guys. And uh, Usually we try to give you, uh, you know, some references that you can go out and do some research. Uh, this one we found uh, just was about the medical billing and coding industry. And as you can see, it's from PR, PRN Funding, and they say that uh, this industry is predicted to boom by the year 2020. And I think I can uh, use a little pin here. Let's see if this will let me draw a circle around this. Can you see that right there? 21%. It's faster than any other occupation by the year 2020. So again, if, any, if you're looking for a business to get into, I would always get into one that you know, has some kind of growth uh, that's coming. And uh, this one certainly does. Uh, let's see. The next article I found uh, was just back in August. And it, again, was talking about the 10 healthcare jobs that are most impacted by Obamacare. And as you can see, medical records and billing is one of them. Uh, as you can see down here, again, at, at the bottom of the screen here, I'll kind of circle this. There's potentially 30 million new patients that will need health care. I've heard all kinds of different numbers on that, haven't you? I have. Uh, the, 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 the range runs the gamut, but uh, they're all in the positive, that's for sure. No matter you know, what 30, you look at, they're... 30 million, 47 million, uh, you know, it right. depends on who you're talking to. But, hey, with all the uh, baby boomers retiring and... Uh, uh, all the people that don't have insurance that will have insurance that will certainly uh, uh, affect this business greatly. Uh, let's Absolutely. see. In fact, I found this little chart here. This is from the California Health Care Foundation, and they were just projecting health, health spending in the United States from 1960, uh, starting over here on this end, as you can see, uh, 27. This, these are in billions of dollars. And as you can see, it's going to go up uh, to, what is that, $4 trillion. Uh, four and a half trillion dollars, yeah, by 2020. So again, anytime you're looking at a business to get into, folks, uh, make sure the arrow goes this direction. <laughs> not, you know, it's not. And there aren't many direction. of those these days. Yes, no, there's not many businesses no. that you can look at that have that kind of potential. Right. And then I, I put this little chart here together because people are always asking us, well, how will the Affordable Care Act uh, affect? this business, the medical billing business. Well, folks, if you think about it, we've already talked about the fact that, you know, there's going to be more patients that are moving into the healthcare system. And of course, that means there's going to be more visits to the doctor's office. Uh, that will generate more medical claims, of course, which means more revenue for the doctor, which gives even more billing to you as the medical biller, uh, meaning more profits for you and the doctor. That frees the doctor and his staff up to have more time uh, to see more patients. Looks pretty positive to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, folks, 
everybody who's doing their due diligence right now on either us or any other business that you're looking at, you need to think in terms of what what kind of potential does that business have? And this question, how, how will the Affordable Care Act, uh, again, Obamacare, they refer to it as, even the president himself, by the way, refers to it as Obamacare, how, how does it affect doctors in this industry at, right now? Well, this article that we saw here from Fierce Practice Management, there it is, um, back in May, uh, basically says that doctors will spend almost 83000 a year completing paperwork. <laughs> and uh, that's not really where they make money. Uh, if you think about it, folks, they're making their money uh, by getting involved in uh, seeing more patients. So, uh, hey, that's probably a good idea. I'm going to turn my camera off there, too, for now. Um, okay, so here's that actual quote right here. It says, uh, according to the TMA, which represents more than 47,000 physicians and medical students, each of its physicians spends nearly 83000 a year on administrative costs. Uh, sometimes it says they often stay, look at this, at the office until 9 p.m. or later just to complete the paperwork. So, folks, that's, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to free those doctors uh, up from doing. Uh, here's another chart from the um, Medical Group Management Association, which we're members of, by the way, as you know, uh, also, Dirk. And look, out of the things that are the biggest challenges, this is what doctors answered in a survey, what are the biggest challenges of running a group practice, uh, look at the biggest one right there. This is the one that uh, they're worried about the most is the rising operating costs. Well, folks, a big part of that cost is uh, what they pay to you know, have their billing done. Uh, some people don't realize how expensive that is. Look at this quote here. Uh, this is, uh, says from the Health Management Technology, they say that it can cost as much as $57 per claim. And, Dirk, you talked to enough people to know that that is uh, – that's probably low for a lot of doctors. I mean, they have just a huge uh, overhead, don't they, uh, doing those claims? Well, absolutely, and, and that kind of ties in with the, the first question that I see here from uh, from Brady. Uh, ask uh, who who are the uh, licensee's biggest competition? Uh, and you just showed there the biggest competition for our licensees is the doctor's medical billing in-house billing system. Uh, it's extremely expensive. It's full of human error. Uh, they average uh, about a 35% claim rejection rate, and uh, you know, what our licensees offer to these doctors is light years ahead of what these doctors are accustomed to working with. So um, you, you, you were answering the question there before Brady was even asking it, uh, but it, it's, uh, it, it's just not an efficient way for these doctors to, to, to continue trying to manage their business. Yeah, and, and Brady, there are, of course, uh, some, some large medical billing groups out there in various parts of the country, but believe me, uh, they can't even handle all of the uh, businesses out there. If you do a little research on our website, for example, there's a link up there where you can actually see how many doctors there are in your area. And by just typing in your zip code, uh, you'll find that there are just literally thousands. I think here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Dirk, there's like 43,000 medical providers. So there's that's no right. way that any one billing company can handle all of the business that's in any given area. That's why usually there are several. But Believe me, you're not going to run into a lot of competition out there, as you'll see as we go through this uh, webinar, because you have a huge advantage in many, many ways. Well, here's another uh, research that we just found today. Uh, you can go out and Google this yourself out there. Just put in, uh, you know, uh, a doctor shortage, uh, and you'll find this little uh, article here from the Association of American Medical Colleges. They are saying, uh, look, I've got it kind of bigger here. I'll show the next slide. Um, this is the supply of doctors that they project from 2010 to 2020. So in 10 years, it's going to grow, uh, you know, it looks like from about 700,000 to maybe another 100,000, uh, 500,000. No, that'd be 250,000, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's almost 500,000 more. So yeah. in between here, you've got uh, uh, the huge gap of what our demand will be as we get closer to uh, 2020, and that's uh, close to 900,000. Now, I don't know if this um, this uh, video is going to be uh, in sync, but I think you'll be able to hear the uh, the audio on this if I uh, do this right. So see if this comes through, uh, Dirk. We'll just try. I'm just putting in
we have an aging population. We have 10,000 new people who have a birthday of age 65 every single day, and that's going to continue for the next 19 years, increasing the demands for health care costs. There's a growing number of physicians who are getting older who are reducing their office hours. There are a growing number of physicians who have fewer office hours. And we have now a geographical and demographic shift in the population so that there are people moving to areas where there are fewer primary care physicians, cardiologists, and other specialists that can meet their demands. So the answer is it's a perfect storm. Obviously, we have a shortage. <laughs> I've never tried that before. Did it come through? Okay. It did, yeah. I thought it came through just just fine, actually. It's the audio. Yeah. I know that because of GoTo uh, webinar trying to stream that video to uh, you know uh, dozens of people right now, it's kind of hard to see. But anyway, as you heard from that doctor, uh, there is definitely a shortage. Now, if that is true, then, of course, doctors are going to need lots of help uh, because what they should be doing, of course, is spending their time, their staff's time, uh, you know, seeing those patients that are going to be coming in. And so that's a good news for us as medical billers. It means that the doctors will be even more open to uh, outsourcing that, that billing to us. Absolutely. And then one last question I wanted to address there was, how, how will the Affordable Care Act uh, affect the insurance companies? Now, that's important for people to know because people wonder, well, you know, is insurance going away? Uh, is there not going to be any more billing? Uh, is it going to a, a you know, one-payer system? What's the real projected? Uh, well, we'll look at this quote here now. This is just back from September, and it says that um, uh, October 1st is a big day on the calendar. That's when the government subsidized health insurance exchanges set up, which you know just went by, of course. Uh, the government forecasts that 7 million Americans will seek benefits through these marketplaces, and these companies can grow earnings, they're talking about the insurance companies, 15% a year, even without Medicaid expansion. So as you can see here, they're saying it's an enormous boom, uh, and the industry sees green. Now let me show you how green they see it. These are some of the biggest insurers out there that deal with Medicare and Medicaid. And as you can see, the projected growth here for Blue Cross Blue Shield is all the way up. Again, we're looking at uh, you know this kind of chart, right? It's going this way. So watch all of these now. Here's United Healthcare. Here's Aetna. See the pattern? <laughs> the projected Absolutely. growth of all of these insurance companies is uh, huge. Upward growth means uh, it's a good business to get into, folks, because the health insurance companies are not worried about going away. They obviously are projecting huge uh, increases because they're going to have to provide, of course, that much more uh, insurance policies for all the uninsured Americans. So we're back to our topic for today after kind of introducing uh, why people should look at this as a, a, a good business to get into. And uh, so let's talk about that just for a minute, Dirk. Um, we, we have kind of a complete solution, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, everything that a, that a licensee could want. Yeah, I mean, there there's several pieces of the puzzle, so we kind of illustrate it by this, by saying, look, you have a, a billing system. Obviously, you have to have a billing system to do a medical billing, but you also nowadays have to do an have an electronic medical record system, which we'll talk a little bit more about, because that's where the doctors are moving. They're getting away from paper into electronic medical records. But you also have to have another entity involved in medical billing, and that is what's called the clearinghouse. Dirk, how would you describe a clearinghouse? Well, it's an integral part, of course, of the uh, medical billing process. Uh, and in typical situations, uh, typical meaning not ours, uh, typically the clearinghouse is a third party. Uh, it is a completely uh, outside entity. Uh, they will charge you fees for every transaction that you run through them. And, uh, of course, it is just another uh, potential hurdle that the, that, the, that the claim is going through before it actually, before the reimbursement process begins. Uh, we, of course, have streamlined that and uh, have our own clearinghouse in-house. So uh, uh, it's a very integral part of the, of the system, and uh, with us at least, it is um, uh, just another one, one of the aspects that makes us very unique. Yeah, in fact, we had uh, some of our technology partners down, uh, was that last week? Yes, <laughs> last week. And uh, they were telling us that as far as they knew, no other company in America has all of these three uh, things all built into one package, one system. And that's very unique. That's why our rejection rate for 
uh, the claims that are submitted through our system, folks, is less than 2%. Yeah. And as uh, Dirk said earlier, it's somewhere around 34 35% on average nationwide. So we're bringing that down. That means more money in the doctor's pocket. And then there's one last piece of the puzzle there that's really important, and that is the people. Now, let me explain each one of these by kind of referring to what we call our uh, private labeled billing system. We call it iClaim. And as Dirk said earlier, this is not the type of old-fashioned software that uh, you know comes on a DVD uh, or a CD that installs on your computer. Uh, as Dirk said, nothing no software is installed on your local computer. That means uh, none of that patient data is there either, does it, Dirk? That's right. That's exactly right. And the patient data, of course, is what can get uh, doctors uh, and billing companies in trouble because if they let that patient data get out or the computer that it's on is stolen, for example, or hacked into, uh, then, of course, they've broken all kinds of rules and regulations from uh, the HIPAA uh, you know, th that governs all that privacy. Ours, again, like Dirk said, uh, being a web-based system, uh, makes it very, very secure. Uh, we have it on redundant uh, servers in different parts of the country and different electrical grids, and it means it's very, very protected. Uh, we've never had any problem with that in, uh, you know, 20 years of, of uh, having this out there. So then there's the electronic medical record system. Dirk, I'm seeing a black box on the screen right now that's kind of covering up the slide. I'm not sure if that's something we've got going on here or not. Let me pause my screen and just see if something popped up on my uh, computer. Yeah, it's just on yours, here. I believe. It is. Oh, so you yeah. don't see that, huh? Oh, no, okay. not at all. All right. <laughs> I'll skip that then. I'll ignore that. Uh, okay, so uh, what does that mean, electronic medical record system? Well, it means that uh, the doctor is able to uh, keep track of all of his patient data uh, through electronic means, not getting away from the paper, in other words, attaching all of his documents in an electronic way. And of course, ours is used on, on the Apple iPad and, and other tablet devices and is certified for meaningful use. Uh, we'll get into that here in just a second, but it's important that you know that uh, the doctors can actually get reimbursed from the government for moving to an electronic medical record system, and you have to have a system that is certified for that meaningful use for the doctor to get those dollars. Let's see, uh, Eric, uh, Dirk, I think it's up to uh, $39,000 this year at least. That's right. That that's the right. doctors, if they get involved in it, could, uh, could yeah. get from the government. It's just uh, you know money that's set aside to encourage doctors to, to move to the electronic uh, solutions there. Sure. And then, Absolutely. as uh, Dirk mentioned and talked to you about, the clearinghouse is a very important part of this. Um, Ours is accredited, and that just means that it has passed all of those stringent rules that the government has for making sure that the claims are processed quickly and efficiently and, uh, of course, with privacy as well. That one last piece of the puzzle is pretty unique to our company, folks, because we have the people behind the system that makes it successful for medical billers. Uh, you know, people could go out and start their own medical billing company, couldn't they, Dirk? Absolutely. Uh, there's nothing, nothing at all stopping them. No, I mean, there's software out there. There's, yeah. uh, there's courses. You mentioned courses that people could take at colleges to get involved in it. Yeah. But, folks, when you join uh, American Business Systems, as Dirk said earlier, we are the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies that are out there. We literally have hundreds of people from coast to coast who've proven that our system works and uh, that are filing uh, thousands of claims for hundreds of doctors from coast to coast every single day. So uh, it's kind of like starting your own uh, business and yet not being, you know, by yourself in that business. Uh, and we're different uh, in that we're not a franchise. Dirk, you want to kind of tell them the differences? Why, what are some of the disadvantages of a franchise versus our licensing situation? Well, absolutely. Uh, there are two real big uh, differences between uh, our opportunity and that of traditional franchises. Uh, one of them being that we don't charge any franchise royalties or ongoing expenses of any kind. Uh, once, a, uh, once a licensee becomes a licensee, uh, they will never owe American Business Systems another, another dollar. Uh, so that um, you know, certainly a, a huge difference, uh, especially when lots of times the franchise royalties can be 6%, 7%. Uh, there could be uh, required the advertisement to, of the gross. That's exactly yeah. right. So, uh, you know, can uh, certainly take longer to recoup your initial investment, uh, as well as uh, you know, always um, uh, you know, suppress your uh, your profit margin. 
Uh, and the second big difference uh, is that uh, we don't place any territorial restrictions on our licensees. Um, regardless of where you're at, uh, you can, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can work with any physician, sleep center, ambulatory service uh, that is that, that is part of the United States healthcare system. So uh, you know we have we've had licensees that have started their their business in Tampa, Florida, and uh, at some point decide to move uh, to another part of the country, and they're able to do so. Uh, of course, still working with the doctors that they had uh, worked with while uh, had begun working with while in Florida, and then uh, you know there's nothing stopping them from uh, establishing new relationships in their new territory. So, um, two very unique things, uh, of course. Um, you know, we don't require a brick and mortar location. Uh, again, talking about the cost savings of uh, of getting a business started, uh, you know, a brick and mortar location has um, uh, lots of expenses associated with it. So, uh, uh, there are lots of things about ABS that. Uh, you know, uh, are light uh, that, that are just uh, night and day compared to a typical franchise uh, a franchise opportunity. Yeah, uh, ask your ABS uh, business coach a little bit more about that. When you engage with them, they'll uh, be be glad to share the differences there, and you can ask them. You know, of course, all the questions uh, that you want. Speaking of questions, uh, Dirk, you're kind of keeping an eye, I guess, over there. Any others come in? I am, and uh, you guys, please, um, if y'all that are on the call here today. Uh, don't forget that you can type in your questions there in the control panel, and uh, uh, we've got uh, a slew of them here already. Um, let's see here. Let me find a few. Of course, some of them are being asked more than once. Um, why would a doctor outsource? I think we've uh, touched on a few of those uh, those things. Um, let's see. What sort of profit potential? Um, I don't know that this necessarily ties in with our subject today, but what sort of profit potential can a licensee expect? Well, uh, the best way to answer that really is for, again, to point you back to our website, absystems.com, because up under one of the tabs there at the top, menu choices, I think it's uh, what is the investment or something like that, there is a little tool that we have there that you can actually plug in a few figures, uh, and we kind of guide you as to what the you know what those figures mean. And once you plug that in, you'll see that the typical single practice, doctor practice, uh, that you'll be doing billing for can earn you anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars a year. So, folks, when I tell people that, I say, look, you just have to decide how many of those doctors do you need uh, to replace your your current income. And you know, for some people, that that is their income. Uh, That's right. But if you have uh, if you have a, a several dozen doctors, like some of our licensees have, you can you can picture that uh, this is definitely a potential six-figure. Uh, income for anybody who uh, really w works the business. Uh, we just heard from uh, Tierney. Uh, you know her, Dirk, out in California. Tierney Martins is one of sure. our licensees. She is now over 50 doctors. And wow. uh, when I met with her about two and a half years ago out there in California, my wife and I were just you know on vacation. We we visited uh, we visit licensees as we travel. That's <laughs> that's our vacation. And. Uh, <laughs> This uh, lady had about uh, oh uh, four or five doctors at the time. Now she has 50, so she's grown tremendously. We're very proud of her. Okay, yeah, well, let me move on here. Um, let's talk about iClaim because we mentioned that as an integral part of that puzzle. iClaim is our proprietary cloud-based uh, medical billing system. And uh, folks, I, I think I quoted this figure earlier that uh, industry experts have found that the average number of rejected claims for a medical practice is around 34%. Now, the reason for that is because a lot of doctors, of course, are still using uh, paper, what they call super bills. When they see a patient, I'll zoom in on that so you can see those codes a little better, they actually circle some codes that have to do with what the procedure is that they uh, are going to charge that that patient or that insurance company or Medicare. And so as you can see, they just circled some numbers. And you put those numbers into our system. Now, I'm going to show you some screenshots here of the iClean system so you can see that it's very clean, very easy to use, has lots of shortcuts, very, very user friendly. And uh, in fact, you can pick from the menus that they drop down there from the top of the screen. And then when you do, uh, you're taken instantly, of course, to one of the screens there that allows you, for example, to put in the information. This is the information you'd need from a patient to, uh, per, uh, you know, to process their claim. And as you can see, there's some yellow highlighted fields there. That's the required information for the claim. The computer even knows what you have to have to, to send a claim. And it can uh, check the eligibility of the patient in real time, live, online. 
uh, it checks the database of the insurance company that that person says that they are a part of and uh, comes right back and shows you that information so you and the doctor knows that they're covered. Then, uh, with another click of a button, it can take all that information and put it right into the iClean system. And the first time people see this, Dirk, they're just blown away, aren't they? Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, it's always, uh, for both potential licensees and uh, doctors alike, uh, it's always uh, fun to, to hear their expressions and their comments whenever they, they uh, you know, see the capabilities of these systems. Um, you know, even, even doctors that have, uh, you know, believe that they have seen every available option are just um, uh, oh, awestruck the, whenever they see that yeah. this is the, uh, yeah, that this is like that's uh, what we hear about the way. whole demonstration of the system to them. Right. Uh, because folks, we're just kind of touching on this briefly here, but let me just mention that if you'd like to see a demonstration of the system live, uh, just ask your ABS uh, business coach, and they'll be glad to set that up for you so that you can actually uh, do a walkthrough and see it really in real time uh, right across the Internet. Uh, you'll see that it has all the codes built into it. This is why you don't have to be a coder, uh, because it can look the codes up for you. It can check the codes against its database to make sure that those codes are accurate. And, of course, it's all ready for the new ICD-10 codes that are coming, uh, when is that, uh, Dirk? It's next, next October, I think, 2014. Yeah. And, uh, of course, there's all kinds of reports that you can provide for the doctor, and if you wish, since it's a, a cloud-based system, you can give access to the doctor. Uh, you know, give them a username and password, and the doctor can get right in there and see the real-time status of their claims. Uh, they love it when they see it. So uh, you'll be able even to from their smartphone. Oh yeah, that's right. Even while they're on the golf course, that's pull right. up their smartphone and uh, look at the status of where their money is. That's a that's a right. great. Um, so iClaim is a part of the family of services that you, as an ABS licensee, will be able to provide to your clients. Now, uh, Dirk, we always get this question, well, do I have to provide all these services? Can I just do the medical billing? Yes. I mean, some people don't do anything but use iClaim. <laughs> That's all they do is the medical billing for the doctor. But right. as you'll find out more about these services on our website and by talking to your ABS business coach, you'll see that each one of these services can fill in one of those gaps that the doctor has in their revenue cycle. So uh, you'll want to learn more about them, and of course we cover uh, all of those things in the live training workshop here. Sure. And the doctor will want to, le to learn more about them. I mean, after, you know, we hear it all the time, after our licensees uh, begin providing at least one service for a doctor, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take very long before the doctor starts seeing the real bottom line benefits to, uh, to what they're doing for them. And they want to, they want to find out how, uh, you know, how else the licensees can help them out. Uh, you know, what other ways can you help them, uh, you know, cut their costs, increase their profits, uh, help them become more efficient? Sure. You know, I'm I'm looking at the questions here as you're talking, uh, Dirk, and uh, it's funny. I see one here from Richard. He's he's, he's asking uh, how will the problems with the Obamacare affect the medical billing industry? And it used to be that we had the question asked, how will the new Obamacare affect the billing system? <laughs> now he's talking about all the problems that they're having with people trying to get on the website, you know, and and get the insurance. Uh, Sure. Richard, I, I wish I had a crystal ball and could uh, tell you that all of those problems will be solved. Uh, uh, if it does, uh, of course, it eventually will. We know that's just a matter of getting enough uh, you know, smart nerds on a system like that to figure it out. Uh, and I understand it's getting you know, better each day. But the, the real question should be, uh, and what we answered earlier was, will that affect the medical billing business, even just the fact that we have the new uh, you know, universal health care in the United States? And the answer is no. Uh, the problems will just kind of slow down the number of new people. But, I mean, I still think there's a deadline somewhere in March, isn't it, that the uh, patients themselves, I don't keep up with this because I don't have health insurance, but for people who need health insurance, uh, that's a very important deadline that they've got to reach. So, I don't know. My guess is this is just a this is a wild guess from me being in this industry for 20 years, Dirk, but I think that that deadline will be moved forward. Uh, they, they set a deadline in 1997, I think it was, that all doctors must stop doing paper claims and move to electronic claims. <laughs> yeah, that was a deadline. <laughs> that, 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 that had to be moved several times because even today our licensees walk into a doctor's office and find doctors still billing 
using uh, paper um, forms. So anyway, I think that uh, I think that will be extended. Okay, will you jump in there, Dirk, with any other questions you see that you think I need to address to? I'm just kind of rambling along here to try to fit it into the hour. It's sure, 35 sure. after, so. Let's talk about EMRX just for a second. Now, electronic medical records, uh, this is our proprietary cloud-based electronic medical record system. And folks, this is the future. There's no way to stop this. It is going to be completely paperless. And for many doctors, it already is. Using our system, they don't have to have any paper. Uh, they literally can use their iPad or other tablet device to just, you can see here, just tapping with their finger on these buttons that are designed for these. They can actually do all of the patient encounter, all the notes for that patient encounter, right there on that tablet. They don't ever have to even type because it has a built-in dictation. <laughs> the <laughs> iPad has a little dictation thing on the other thing. All they just tap and just start talking, and it translates it into text. Uh, so here's a few screenshots of that just so you can see that it is a very, again, modern, clean system. The doctors, again, once they've seen this, are just blown away by what it has within it and all that it can do. All the documents that uh, uh, you know attached to that about that patient can be attached electronically so that there's no paper that needs to be anywhere. All those file cabinets, you know, Dirk, that you see behind the doctor there, those can all right. be done away with. And of course, we mentioned the reporting earlier. When you see this reporting, folks, at a glance, a doctor can see exactly where their money is, and that's... Uh, that's probably the most important thing to them. Now, EMRX is just one of many of the services that we have. So I thought I would talk about just a few of the others. This is the flyers that we've designed for you that can have your name and logo printed on them. Uh, and this one, of course, tells about EMRX. You can get uh, electronic copies of all these from your ABS business coach if you'd like to see these uh, up close. Or they may be even out on our virtual brochure now. I think they are. Aren't they, Dirk? I don't know. Yes, they are. Okay, but let's talk about uh, Quick Collect, for example. Uh, doctors have a problem sometimes with their patients, don't they, Dirk? They do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, patients uh, aren't always able to uh, pay what they owe, and uh, even more unfortunate for physicians, uh, they're typically not at the top of the list. <laughs> That's right. Those those medical bills go to the bottom of the stack, don't they? <laughs> Always, always seem to. So do our licensees then uh, turn into collection agents? Not at all. Uh, by simply facilitating the uh, you know, introduction of quick collect to the physician's practice, um, you know, it, it, uh, it's, it's an entire, entirely automated system from that point. Uh, our licensees never uh, type up a letter or make a phone call or, or lick a stamp or anything along those lines, but uh, uh, they do, uh, of course, receive a, a, an ongoing residual income for um, you know, having introduced the, the physician to, to our quick collect service. And uh, it actually does more collections for the doctors for their uh, you know past due accounts than even collection agencies. Most people don't realize collection agencies medical claims. Uh, I mean medical bills are tough to collect, and uh, they charge up to 50% to the doctor uh, for collecting that money, and they don't collect but about 14% of all the money turned over to them. This system triples that and collects about 41% of the money due the doctors, and it does it in a very nice way and does not uh, upset the patients. Uh, so it's a, it's a magical system. Again, you can find out more about it there on our website. Now let's talk about Audit Guard just for a second. What, uh, what do you think uh, doctors think when uh, somebody from Medicare walks in the office and says, I'd like to audit <laughs> your records? <laughs> I would be scared, uh, wouldn't you? I think they would probably wonder if it was too late to take a sick day. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, that's, uh, the, that's the last thing they're looking for. Yeah, because Medicare uh, can come in and look at their uh, billing, and if they find some, uh, let, let's say the doctor has said that he spent, you know, uh, 30 minutes with the patient, and he uh, and he only uh, and he and he put down that it was a, a a level five visit. Now, all that means is that that Medicare that's the maximum that they could ask for, and it means that the patient, uh, the doctor should have spent, you know, closer to an hour. So anyway, Medicare comes in and audits those things, and when they find an error, they can find the doctor up to $10,000 per error. Mm, <laughs> that would wow. deplete your bank account fast, wouldn't it? Quickly, very quickly. So this service that you offer is done by uh, 
you know, us, basically certified medical coders who behind the scenes can pre-audit the doctor's encounters with patients and prepare that doctor and explain to that doctor why they need to be doing things differently in their office. Uh, sometimes it has to do with the codes, sometimes it just has to do with uh, the way they're actually handling the encounter. So this can make you a lot of money, folks, and you don't really do any of the work. Again, that's all done by our certified medical coders that, that work with you on that stuff. And, you know, I just saw a question here. It's actually on here twice, so I guess Jelani uh, is actually uh, has asked this twice, so I guess it's pretty important. So I'm going to address this one because it has to do with uh, a, another company out there that does something similar to what we do. And uh, he's just asking, how do you guys compare to uh, the claim tech systems out there? Hmm. So if you're not aware of those, uh, it's just another company that has some software that they've developed. It's very good software. I mean, for server-based software, it's uh, it's probably one of the best that's out there. Uh, in fact, they sell it under a different brand name directly to doctors. So they're kind of competing with the licensees. But anyway, they teach people how to do similar to what we do. All I can say, Johnny, is probably the best thing to do is to ask your APS rep to send you. We have some information that we can send you uh, that kind of compares us with, you know, uh, other companies that are out there that, that are doing something similar to what we're doing. Uh, we don't ever knock those companies because, believe me, we like competition. We like the fact that there's something to compare to. And because they are server-based software and not cloud-based, um, you know, we, we think we've got a lot of advantages because that's where the future is. It, uh, it's not uh, in residing that, that software on your computer because that's where you run into problems with the HIPAA privacy rules, having that patient data there. Uh, right. Too easy to get stolen and, and destroyed. All right. Well, I just thought I would jump in there with that one question. If you see some more dirt. Sure. Any others there you want to address? I'm not paying as much um, as those. Here's one that says, uh, why would a doctor work with me before I have any experience? Well, that's a good question. We we actually uh, address that in our live training pretty in depth, but it boils down to this, folks. Uh, if you go out there on your own, let's say you just tried to start your own medical billing business, you're right to think that. I mean, why would a doctor choose you when you don't have any experience whatsoever? You have to be associated with a, a large network like we are. Let me ask you this. Would you buy a home from somebody who just opened a Century 21 office? Uh, and, and you wouldn't know that, of course, because they're not going to tell you that they haven't sold a house yet. Uh, but it wouldn't matter because they've been trained by Century 21. Well, that's something similar to what we do. We teach people to position themselves as brand new offices that have opened up in the area of the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies. We do thousands of claims for hundreds of doctors from coast to coast every day. And so you can position yourself as being much larger, much bigger, much more experienced. We have all kinds of testimonials. We have references. We have all the things that a, an established company would have for you as a, a brand new licensee. So yeah, good. Absolutely. Good. Great. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, we've got about 17 minutes left here, so see if we can't get through a few more of these. Um, here's from Hans. I um, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, are your security measures HIPAA compliant? Yes, Hans. Uh, you won't find anybody more uh, paranoid about the security stuff than, than I am. As the CEO of the company, believe me, I have vetted very carefully uh, and are, are very sure and, and can tell you that we have never had any breaches at all in the 20 years that this system has been in use. Uh, we've never had any uh, violations of HIPAA. We have to follow their rules for it to be certified as HIPAA compliant, uh, which it is. And uh, like I said, uh, we have the same security features in place that any bank or investment company that is on the internet has. Uh, and it's just about as secure as it gets. Uh, that means that basically we are going to always make sure, first and foremost, that the patient privacy is protected because uh, that would be, of course, a disaster for any company uh, to have, uh, you know, some sort of leak of the, of the data. It's much more likely to happen, by the way, uh, if it's on a computer in a doctor's office or in a computer that's in your office. Think about that very carefully before you even consider, uh, you know, some kind of server-based software. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, Hans follows up uh, asking, uh, can you interface with existing EMRs? Yes, we can. Uh, our system is fully uh, HL7 uh, compliant, which means uh, health level 7 is just the standard that's been set up so that electronic medical records systems can uh, interface with one another. Uh, let's see here. David asks, um, once I buy the licensee, is it, uh, is it for my whole life or uh, limited to a, a certain number of years? Wow, I, I missed that question. What what's the question? Uh, he, he is David's asking uh, is the uh, is the license for his entire life or is it only for a certain uh, you know period of time? Oh, uh, yes, no. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I kind of missed the, the the key phrase there. The lifetime is uh, is what our license is. In other words, we actually refer to it, David, as your lifetime license fee. Uh, we've got people that signed up with us 20 years ago that are still, you know, uh, processing claims for doctors, uh, and you you never cease to be a licensee. Uh, that's what people find it hard to wrap their brain around: is once I have become a licensee, what do I pay per year? You know, for continuing membership in ABS or support. Uh, as Dirk said earlier, folks, there is not another penny that you pay directly to ABS. That that one fee that we charge. And, and some people think it's high. Some people who come through our training think it's low. <laughs> but uh, that, that fee is there for a reason. It covers all of our costs. And then one other thing that I want to share with you that uh, some companies might not even share, but behind the scenes, we've made arrangements with our technology partners so that ABS actually makes money on all the services, all the claims that go through your, our system and all these other services that we're talking about here, like AutoCard here on the screen, those are all things that we make money on as well. So we don't need to charge you any extra. Those are We make rebates from our technology partners on those services so that we get money uh, on all of those. They're pennies per transaction, but believe me, folks, we, we have a lot of licensees and a lot of transactions happening. So, yeah, there's nothing else that yep. you ever pay. No, very successful business model. And again, folks, uh, please, uh, you know, any questions you have, please type them into the uh, control panel. Uh, we're not going to get to all of them today, but uh, I can assure you we will contact you back. Um, a business coach will contact you back and uh, uh, answer any questions that you do have. But uh, So please, um, get just a few minutes left here. Please uh, continue to provide those. Uh, here's another question here, Patrick, uh, from George. Uh, what is the expectation regarding possible government control of all medical billing systems? Uh, he mentions parenthetically that he's thinking on the order of uh, income tax regulation. I'm not sure how the income tax I, mean, I guess do you, do you foresee the uh, government ever just uh, you know, taking over all uh, medical billing services? Well, <laughs> Now I, I'm the first one to say that there's no uh, there's no predicting what the government will or won't do, <laughs> but I can point to the past and tell you that if they had wanted to take over the billing side uh, of the you know uh, medical industry, they would have done that in 1965. Folks, we've had a form of universal health care since 1965. It's called Medicare. And when Medicare came into place, that that question was probably asked as well. Uh, I wasn't in the industry at that time, but I can tell you that if you do a research, there were people asking that same question. Oh, is the is the government going to you know take over the medical billing? Uh, folks, there is a, a group that we're a part of uh, that is uh, Health Care Billing and Management Association, HBMA. Uh, they have uh, people in Washington that actually meet with the people from uh, HHS. Uh, uh, and, and they, they actually find all the things that are going on. In other words, we have representation. And they say uh, that through their research, they found that even the people who are a part of uh, HHS are the people who say that single payer is not going to happen in our lifetime. Uh, there is a lot of uh, things going on with the insurance industry itself that will keep that up. Folks, look, 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 here's one way you can know. Look downtown at the biggest buildings in your downtown area. They're all owned by insurance companies. <laughs> and so they have lobbyists, uh, they have lawyers, they, are, they have a vital vested interest in this continuing. So whether uh, the billing is done directly to Medicare, whether it's done to a private insurance company, it doesn't matter. Somebody still has to bill for that. 
for that to be paid. So yep. the future, believe me, the future is bright. In fact, that article you showed out of uh, BC Advantage magazine that I wrote just last month, uh, Dirk, is on that very subject, the bright future for medical billing companies. So uh, ask your ABS uh, business uh, uh, coach for a copy of that article, and you'll see that uh, it, it's a huge bright future for us. All right, let me just cover a few more of these as you're looking at some other questions there. Dirk, you just get ready to jump in if you have one. AutoCard, folks, is a way that you can actually automate your marketing to the doctors, and you can offer it to the doctors to automate their marketing. Yes, doctors sometimes, especially new doctors, should be doing some marketing to get new patients in. And so we can show you how to use this AutoCard to set your marketing on automatic, not, not having to do a thing we can tell you stories about licensees who put doctors on this auto card follow-up system that sends out a physical, beautiful greeting card. Up to 18,000 different cards are in the system. You go online. You can send these cards to a doctor without even thinking about it. Once you put them on what's called a campaign, that doctor gets one of those cards every month or however often you want him to get one. And when they do, they're reminded that you are the billing company that they should be thinking of uh, You know, when they do decide that they want to outsource their billing. We can tell you many, many testimonials of licensees have used that and have gotten clients from that system as well. So again, can't go into too much detail there, but there's a lot of money to be made with that system as well. Choice pay is another way that doctors can have their patients pay automatically, and you, again, are not involved, and it's all in an online automated system, to get the payments from the patients. Uh, it takes the money directly out of their uh, credit card or their checking account. So uh, another great system to offer the doctor. It automates their cash flow, and, of course, you make money on all those uh, payments as well. Eric, anything else? <laughs> I'm just pausing to throw a question or two in there because I can, I can look at the clock and kind of time, you know, we've got a few. Well, we've got more than we can answer. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to uh, finish up, on, uh, I think maybe you've got a few more here, and, and uh, then we can wrap it up. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, us business coaches can uh, get back with the folks to, to, with these unanswered questions. Okay. Uh, IDOCS Now, why don't you explain that a little bit to them? Well, IDOCS Now is a uh, digital document management service. Um, and uh, as, as folks, as you, as you guys will see as you go further through our virtual brochure and learn more about our opportunities, uh, you'll note that, that uh, several of our services, such as IDOCS Now, uh, is not unique to the medical industry. Uh, this is a service that can, uh, uh, that can appeal and, and um, provide great benefits to um, a number of industries and businesses, uh, but it uh, is essentially uh, uh, digitizing all of the uh, manila folders and um, all of the the, the files and things that uh, uh, typically populate the doctor's office. Uh, it's a way to, uh, and like I said, help help um, you know, eliminate the paper aspect of it and uh, digitize it all. So, uh, very uh, very beneficial to the physicians. It's the future, no doubt. <laughs> and the last one here is Code Right, uh, folks. This is a great service that you can offer to doctors and make a lot of money on. You don't have to know anything about coding. We have that question asked a lot. I don't know if anybody's asking that today, Dirk, but. You know, they ask, well, do I have to go to a coding class? Do I have to understand all those? Because they know there's uh, codes, like I showed on the screen a while ago, involved mm -hmm. in medical billing. The answer is no, folks. We have certified medical coders that can help with any coding questions that you have for your clients. And that can straighten out and help doctors get the coding right. Some, some doctors are under coding. That is, they don't know the codes they should be using for a, a particular procedure, and they're getting paid less than they should be. So uh, this is another way to improve the doctor's uh, revenue. As you can see down here, it can improve your revenue rates up to 30% for a doctor. So uh, great solution for doctors who are struggling with their uh, having the right code. So all of these services, folks, that we just kind of ran through real quickly today are things that you, as an ABS licensee, are able to uh, offer. And, of course, they're all included in our licensing fee and our, in our training package. There's nothing that you're going to you know, pick and choose or have to decide what you want or don't want because you need all of these to be the total solution uh, to the doctor's revenue cycle challenges that are out there. We're constantly developing these types of flyers that we've been showing you. Here's one we just came up with uh, on why doctors outsource their billing. Ask your APS uh, business coach uh, for a copy of this if you want to. These are some doctors who have been outsourcing their billing to some of our licensees and uh, say some good things about it. 
We also have all sorts of marketing materials that are very professional that make you look like a part of the nation's largest network of independent medical billers. Uh, it's not marked with our name on here. This is stuff that you personalize uh, for you and your business. Uh, you can even use the book that Dirk showed earlier that I've published that is a, a marketing tool for you to use in going out and uh, seeing the doctors, educating the doctors on how you can solve their cash flow needs. As, as it says here, uh, the subtitle of my book is How to Get More Money Faster into Your Professional Practice and Plug the Hidden Leaks that are Draining Profits. We have a DVD that we've developed that we spent over $30,000 interviewing those doctors you saw on the flyer earlier. And you'll actually hear them on the DVD, on a video, tell why they've decided to outsource uh, their, their billing. To, and again, uh, you personalize all this for your company, of course. We develop a website for our licensees and provide you a templated, ready-to-go website to, that you can pick from literally hundreds of different choices of graphics and colors and layouts so that you instantly have a presence out there on the Internet. In today's world, Dirk, uh, if you don't have a website, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're just not really in business, are you? No, not at all. We have a trade show display. A lot of our licensees, we teach people how to do trade shows and uh, a great way to connect with doctors, have them come to you and uh, make connections where you can set up uh, appointments to go out and actually do this free practice analysis that we teach our licensees to do. So, folks, we're just kind of pointing out that we've got the tools already developed. We've spent a lot of money on those tools, and they're all available to you as an ABS licensee. The postcard uh, campaign that I mentioned earlier in AutoCard, we have all of those cards developed as well. So there's a series of postcards that can go out to the doctors telling them about each one of the services uh, that we've covered there today. So, uh, Dirk, I think that's about it, except telling them a little bit more about, I guess, our upcoming training and maybe finishing up any questions we have there. Well, that's right, and we do have uh, just a couple of minutes here. We do want to remind you folks, um, again, the uh, week of December 9th uh, is when we will be having our next and uh, actually the last of 2013, uh, our last training workshop. Uh, 2014, as you guys may have uh, inferred from the, today's uh, webinar, is going to be a huge year for medical billing. Uh, and, uh, of course, it would be a great time to, uh, to – uh, a uh, great time to get prepared for the January takeoff by attending that December class. So, again, please let us know uh, for those of you who do plan to attend. Um, Patrick, here's one other question to, that kind of goes along with what you were just talking about. Uh, Marilyn asks, is your system set up to call the patient with an appointment reminder uh, and or send out an email to the patient as well? Yes, Marilyn, actually just about every uh, thing that you've ever heard of out there is available through our system. Uh, it's about the most leading edge technology that you can imagine. Uh, and we have all of that already in place. Again, the technology partners that we're associated with have spent millions of dollars developing uh, really the leading edge technology that's out there. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not other systems that are on the market, of course, that can be used for medical billing. Of, of course, there's dozens of them. But remember, the difference is not just in the technology. It's in all those pieces of the puzzle that nobody else has. The billing, the electronic medical records, the clearinghouse, and the people and support that you're going to need to be successful in this business. We've just, uh, we just kind of put it all together. Yeah, that's right. Well, I show that we are right up against the top of the hour. I tell you, this is uh, always one of the fastest hours of the week, unfortunately. But uh, uh, thank you folks again for uh, joining us. Um, uh, as we may have touched on earlier, uh, another one of the things that makes us uh, extremely unique is our money-back guarantee. Uh, you can see there on the screen, uh, if at the end of the training workshop, uh, and for any reason uh, you don't think this business is right for you, uh, you can simply tell any of, our, uh, any of our team members, and they will arrange for you to receive a, a full refund of your licensee fee. So uh, we're confident in uh, what we have here. Uh, again, uh, we've got a, a, a very strong track record of 20 